Normally when it comes to sequels and prequels, I become skeptical pretty quickly. And that's because oftentimes they rarely match the quality of the original film. However, for some odd reason, I never really felt that going into Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Always felt like the movie waiting a whopping 36 years was enough time for them to get it right. Well, I think I was right. Kind of. How's it going, creeps? Welcome back to Cinema Creep. Cinema Creep is a place where we discuss, dissect, and review all things vile, disgusting, and downright terrifying in the world of horror cinema. And tonight's video is no exception because we're going to be talking all about the new Beetlejuice film, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Wait, damn. Fuck. I did it. Did I say it three times? That was three times, right? So before we get started, only the second half of the video will contain spoilers. And as usual, I will let you guys know before we get to that point. So buckle up because the juice is loose. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice follows the Dietz family after a family tragedy as they return home to Winter River. Still haunted by Beetlejuice, Lydia's life is turned upside down when her teenage daughter Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega, accidentally opens the portal to the afterlife. So overall, the movie looks great and makes you feel like you're right back in the Beetle universe. The movie opening up with aerial shots of Winter River as Danny Elfman's score booms through the speakers matches perfectly with the opening shots of the original, and it immediately transports you back, really yanking on that nostalgia part of your heart. Going into the movie, I had full faith in Tim Burton executing his vision. Again, my biggest concern was going to be the acting from the lead characters, but I was pleasantly surprised as all the characters did an amazing job. And the reason we're all here, Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. Keaton fucking nails the Beetlejuice character again, and it's hard to believe that so much time has passed because he looks and sounds great. One of my concerns before the film was that Beetlejuice character was going to change and be, you know, more watered down for a younger crowd since over the years comedy has become, you know, more restricted and we get force-fed political bullshit in every movie whether we want it or not. But luckily for us, that was not the case here and I couldn't be happier. Beetle remains lewd, rude, and borderline not a kid's character. Uh, just as it should be. And Catherine O'Hara as the beloved Mrs. Deese returns and executes her role perfectly, almost like she just wrapped filming the original film yesterday. Her character is funny and over the top, and she plays it in that same dramatic fashion. Winona Ryder, also great in this, reprising her role with perfection, and it's amazing to see her back in the Lydia Deets character 36 years later because she looks almost identical to how she did back then. And again, it's just one of those nostalgic things for me. Her story arc in this is enjoyable as she is now playing a psychic medium with a television show, and she's also playing a mom, trying to cope with her present and her past. Part of what she's trying to cope with is her fiance, played by actor Justin Thoreau. Um, he's her fiance and manager, and he has a lot of funny moments as he plays a complete weirdo health nut who is more interested in using Lydia's psychic abilities to line his pockets than to actually help her with anything else. Um, he definitely adds a comedy element and just always kind of comes in at the right time. Jenna Ortega as Astrid Dietz does a great job at really driving the movie as she fits into the Beatle universe so well. I was nervous that she was just going to be playing another version of her Wednesday Addams character here, but I was pleasantly surprised that she didn't. She is quickly becoming a favorite actress of mine as she keeps nailing all of these roles in fun films. She's just so fun to watch and I couldn't imagine anyone else playing the Astra Dietz role. She just keeps popping up in all of these fun movies and uh, she really is becoming, you know, one of those household names for the younger generation. William Defoe is also in this and he plays Wolf Jackson, a celebrity detective that after death polices the underworld. Defoe's character is part Two-Face and part Dirty Harry. Defoe is great in everything he does and his character is funny, but honestly, 
His character was really not needed at all in this movie. His character is part of a subplot that could have been cut from the movie entirely, and you would have still got the same movie viewing experience. And the same goes for Monica Bellucci's character, Dolores, who plays the soul-sucking ex-wife to Beetlejuice. She plays a fun character who we get to see staple herself back together in a rad stop-motion animation sequence that reminded me a lot of Frankenhooker, and I guess some people bride of Frankenstein, but again, she was part of that subplot and not really needed and didn't really add anything extra to the film other than, you know, just some cool scenes. Also, Danny DeVito has a quick cameo in this, playing a janitor, and that's really it. I love Danny DeVito. Again, good in everything he does, just hilarious by nature. My favorite character, though, of the entire film was not even Beetlejuice, it was Bob. And if you know, then you know Bob deserved better. Overall, the movie looks and feels good, and it's chocked full of Easter eggs and callbacks to the original, and feels like an appropriate sequel. Burton and team keep things true and used a high number of practical effects and stop motion animation throughout the film, and to me, that was one of the most important decisions they could have made. It's what made the movie feel so damn good. However, this is where that kind of part comes in because it wasn't all great. The biggest drawback was the third act and the story really was sort of one-dimensional with a thin plot that was lazily executed. But that's not really what we're watching Beetlejuice Beetlejuice for. We're watching for the sheer lunacy and Burton's juxtaposition of life and death. The movie is a perfect way to kickstart the Halloween season and a great watch for the entire family. I loved every minute of it, so the question is... Is it better than the original? Of course not, but we as fans are lucky to get a sequel this good 36 years later with most of the original cast. I'm gonna rate it four out of five creeps and I highly recommend you go seeing it in theaters because I think this is one of those movies that's just gonna be more effective and more enjoyable on the big screen. All right, so now I'm gonna talk spoilers and a few things I didn't like about the film, so if you don't want to ruin the movie, skip to the end of this or turn off the review and come back after you've seen the movie. All right, so my biggest complaint was how flimsy the story was with so many different subplots, but none of them fully fleshed out or actually brought to a satisfactory ending. It's like they spent way too much time trying to pack so much shit into the film and none of it was really needed nor did it make a lot of sense. I'm glad to see that they wrote out the Charles Dietz character, but I think they gave him too much screen time and they were too kind to him by showing his actual face on screen. So honestly, fuck that guy. I'll link an article in the description if you're not sure um, about what was going on with that, but you know, he obviously was written out of this movie and I don't think that um, they should have incorporated him as much as they did. The movie also gave you really cool characters in Willem Dafoe and Monica Bellucci, but really did nothing with them, especially Bellucci's character. She half-assed stalks Beetlejuice for the entire film just to be killed in a split second by a sandworm at the end of the movie. Both characters could have been completely removed from the movie and the story would have been just fine. And also the Jeremy character, the boy that Astrid meets that helps her get into the neither world, that character also was not needed. He was just here as a vehicle to get Astrid to see her dead father. And I think we spent way too much time developing her relationship with Jeremy. I think we should have spent more time with Ortega and her love for her father. And I think she could have found her own way into the neither world by potentially summoning Beetlejuice herself. And then I think her father should have played a bigger part in the movie. Her dad, who they half-assed wrote a plot for, only has like one and a half scenes and just does this cheesy, I'll always be with you type of bullshit at the end instead of, you know, like living in the attic as a ghost and the Deets deciding to move back into the house in Winter River. I think that would have been a much better ending. The movie was fun, but the story was literally all over the goddamn place. And uh, it's that simple. I mean, that's it. That's my review. So don't forget to let me know how many creeps you would rate Beetlejuice Beetlejuice down in the comments and let me know what your favorite Tim Burton movie is. Also, don't forget to check the description for cool ways to help support the Cinema Creep channel. Last but not least, don't be a chud and like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more horror content. And that's it. Stay creepy and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.